Hello, this is uh, Peace for Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Um, you can also find me on the thesedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. So today I'm at uh, Liberty Fest in Brooklyn. I'm here with the illustrious uh, Jeffrey Tucker. Um, he, he, uh, he runs, he's a founder of Liberty.me and he runs FEE.org. Um, and I also, uh, you know, I, I interviewed uh, Lawrence Reed earlier, the uh, president of FEE.org, so uh, I'm delighted you. know to that you. I've been Thanks friends with, yeah, it's good to be here. You know, I've been friends with Larry since I was an undergraduate. He came to my college and spoke. Really? Yeah. Wow. And Beautiful. it was so amazing because then two years later, he and I traveled to Nicaragua together. Wow. Uh, back when it was run by the communists. Oh, really? Yeah, the actual, like, real communists. Oh, yeah. oh, and we got arrested together. Yeah, he was telling yeah. me a little bit about how he said he was detained, as yeah, you like yeah. to call it. Yeah. Um, and then you later, later. So, so yeah, so there's an offense. It's a pleasure to be working with him now at FEE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah he's, he's been doing a lot of great work for many years. I'm really, really a fan of his work. And yeah. he's very graciously sent me some of his books and articles, <laughs> like his, his pamphlets, like in the mail. Like, I told him I haven't read any of his books. <laughs> he said, What's your address? <laughs> so no, he just, that's oh, so he's a really, really yeah. gracious man. So, uh, so, yeah, so tell me a little bit about uh, Liberty.me and, and, and what it's about. And well, you know, I wanted a, a publishing platform where people could publish and get noticed without having to go through editors, basically. Yeah. I mean, I, I, wanted, I wanted libertarians, and people were thinking about the fact of human uh, liberty, to be able to have a beautiful place to publish. That was it. And, and, and now that's happened. And so every day there's you know, probably another 15 or 20 articles that appear on the channel. And that we push them out on our social network, and, and a lot of young writers have been able to make a name for themselves as well. It's also a social network, a library. It's it's many many things. Yeah. So that's five dollars a month. It's you know, which is awesome. Yeah. And um, it's it's a great alternative to kind of free social media that's out there. Yeah. When I started the the Voluntary Virtues Network, I uh, I think Michael Shanklin set up a thing for Voluntary Virtues Network, and I was I was. Publishing some of my articles there, yeah. But I kind of, kind of stopped, fall by the wayside, I got sidetracked. But, um, but yeah, and and, and also, um, so FEE, it, it's been around for decades. Right? Yeah, well, it was founded in '46, uh -huh. and and it was it really built the freedom movement in America after World War II, and then you know after the founder died in I think the early '80s or something like that, it began to drift a little bit, and it's just kind of not not a lot has been happening. Um, but I came on in the last year. And with a board that really has big ambitions for the, for the site, mm -hmm. to, to make it into really a freedoms competitor with something like Solana Slate. And, and we're, we're, our traffic was now triple what it was, even 12 months ago. So we've got this beautiful heritage, huge amount of legacy content, 30,000 records, I think, at this point. Um, and it's just getting going to get better. Yeah. Uh, we're building every single day, and over the next 12 months, you're going to see amazing things happen. Wow. Yeah. So, so, uh, so among, among other things, uh, you're an anarchist and you're also a big Bitcoin uh, advocate. Yes. So, so can you just describe a little bit about Bitcoin? I mean, you just talked about it in the panel. No, I mean, I, I love Bitcoin because it, it sort of, you know, I wasn't introduced by a Senate Bank Banking Committee or a Fed economist <laughs> right. or, 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 or an academic at yeah, Harvard or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it really grew out of the cypher, cypherpunk movement. Yeah. Like just code geeks who are, you know, today the most valuable assets in the world, as far as I'm concerned, far more valuable than all the governments. Right. And, <laughs> and it was tested, you know, over the course of 10 months against, you know, every kind of... Um, used to, to try to figure out a way to commodify and title information uh, bundles and port them peer-to-peer -peer around the world with any third-party yeah. uh, uh, intervention and it worked and, and Bitcoin achieved its first value on October 5th of 2009 which is you know first price and that was awesome because that was a proof of concept it was about 16th of a penny was that when they, they, they bought the two pizzas no, that came much later. Oh, that was, was yeah. that 2010, I remember, yeah. I think? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 First, the first proof, I mean, the first posting of a price of Bitcoin was October 5th, 2009. Oh, right. So that was awesome. Uh, that showed that you could actually, that you could hack the digital, digital world to make it act like the physical world. Right, right, right. right. Which is really all we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's all it is. It, it is a kind of gold for the digital age. 
Yeah, yeah, and it was funny when I talk to people about Bitcoin, um, most of them say, yeah, I saw it on Yahoo News and, you know, I heard there was a bunch of crashes and people lost their money. And I don't really trust it. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that the stuff that they hear is only the stuff from mainstream news, which is all, yeah. like, all the well, failures and all, you know. But it was, it's always hacked, been this way with new, new technology. You know, it was this way with railroads. You know, for 40 years, the headlines in the course of building the railroads was, oh, look, here's a stock market scam. You know, here's somebody who, was, who died, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, building roads, who's the train that went off a cliff, and yeah. so on and so on. <laughs> and the headline is never never that humanity has been right. transformed because right. of the railroads. Right. And now millions of people are fed in ways they've never been able to fed. The travel times have been reduced to a hundred a hundred wow. of what they once were, and yeah. so on. And it's the same thing with Bitcoin. Yeah, the headlines will always be you know filled with the scandals and, and the, right. the, the the rackets and, and that. And there are plenty of them. But the big picture is that Bitcoin has changed how we think about money. Yeah, so, so what do you say to people that, that say, well, you know, it's just digital, it doesn't exist, and, you know, hackers can just go in there and, you know, steal your money easily, you know? What, what, do, you, what do you say to those people? Um, what do I just say is that's not true. I mean, it's, it's, it's the least hackable uh, form of money on the planet, actually, as compared with credit cards. Oh, my God. We are trusting, every one of us trusts probably dozens or even hundreds of, of third-party providers to hold intimate data of our lives. I mean, if, if iTunes ever gets hacked, or uh, and it happens every day, actually. There's hackings going on all over the place. Steal our identities, steal our money. It's very insecure. Bitcoin is the opposite, because it's an open source protocol. And you enter and, and exit from the, uh, from the blockchain using a public address system. So it's just awesomely secure. And I've seen it tested and tested again. And I think it's, it's incredible. I mean, in the Bitcoin community, you're very incentivized to find flaws. If you ever find a problem, then you're suddenly famous. You know, so uh, it's being watched by, by hundreds of thousands of the world's smartest people at all times. Yeah, yeah, and I also tell and people. And it also that doesn't hold any personal identity information. That's right. really incredible. Although they do say, well, yeah, although I have heard this kind of semi anonymous because if they, they, like, they can follow your activity, if they go all the way back, they can. Uh, if I, you I, use I, the same public address, sure, you can okay. change a public address. Like, I have one public address that I, I keep on, on my Facebook page or you know, whatever on my website for donations. And yeah, everybody knows that's me. Mm -hmm. But even that, they don't know. Like, right now with your credit card information, they know everything about you. You know, it's a security number. And, all you know, medical records and you know, uh, official records of you know, marriages and and how, houses you've owned and everything. You, 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 your whole identity is trusted with the credit card numbers. That's not even true, even with the public address on on, on Bitcoin. Because I mean, anybody without a name or identity or anything can download a wallet, and I can send the Bitcoin to become an owner and spend it yeah. immediately. Um, the other thing is that, um, so the reward you're looking for is pseudonymous, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's not anonymous, but, um, but there's no identity attached to the public address. Mm -hmm. And every time you make a transaction, you can use a different public address. So, so. I mean, it's, I guess, theoretically possible that it's traceable in that way, but it's, it's so much less traceable than any other form of, of money. Right, right, right. Yeah, and the, other, the other thing I like to tell people is that um, people have voluntarily chosen to use Bitcoin, not because they're forced to use it by some, you know, government. legal tender and government yeah. mandate. And so that alone should tell you, like, people love it. <laughs> they're flocking to it, right? Because yeah. they see that it has value and it has use in their lives and they can transport, you know, value over huge distances, right, across borders. Um, Instantly at virtually zero cost. That's pretty incredible. I mean, 10 years ago, nobody would have even believed there could be such a thing as Bitcoin. Now it exists, and history will never be the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, like you said, you said it's, you said Bitcoin is some money, like email is to, uh, is to the post office. And, you know, I tell people who say, you know, Bitcoin doesn't exist, it's not real, <laughs> it's not tangible. I'm like, well, email is not, doesn't exist, it's not real. Does that mean it's worthless? YouTube it is, worthless? is intangible. Right, right. Netflix is intangible. Right. And, uh, Everything valuable is intangible. Right. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting then. And, and then the other thing is the um, intrinsic value. Like, like, I think Peter Schiff used to use that argument, it doesn't have intrinsic value. But it, it, it mean, people value it for the ease of transfer of value. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, you and know? the thing is that it's scarce. It's a scarce good, and that's the brilliance of the blockchain. That it, it hacked the digital world, it created scarcity out of a non-scarce realm. Uh, 
uh, yeah. little right, units right, right. that are that are very strictly uh, regulated according to an algorithm. Right. We, we get 25 new Bitcoins every 10 minutes or something like that. We yeah. know exactly where they are, where they're going, who owns them, who, what public addresses they're attached to, and so on. So it, it's uh, money has a number of different properties. Right. It has to be divisible and it has to be portable, um, and uh, you want it to be durable and so on. Yeah, but yeah. one of them is that you have to have scarcity right. in money. Right. That's why the, the leaves on the trees don't work as money. Right, you know? right. <laughs> um, uh, and, and so Bitcoin has that scarcity. And, and that's, that's real innovation. Actually, I, was, uh, I remember one of Mike Maloney's uh, the Hidden Secrets of Money documentaries, and they say, you know, they say they say, they say that money grows on trees. <coughs> when actually, in the banking system we have today, it grows much faster. Yeah, that's than actually trees. true. <laughs> that's really <All> right? true. <laughs> Way faster. The dollar could never become money today if you were starting from scratch. You're like, oh, here's a group of 12, 12 guys who are going to uh, you know, decide how many pieces of paper we're going to print. Uh, and you'll take them and give them value. It's like, no, that's probably never gonna happen. It only has value because of the legacy, and the legacy is gold and silver. Right, right. It started as, as a commodity, right? <coughs> that's right. And it was, a, it was a very slow, gradual evolution of you know detaching, slowly detaching from the commodity, except in the paper. <laughs> right. And so, right, okay, cool. Beautiful. Jeffrey, thanks a lot. Okay, for the it's been a really fun conference. Thank you for having <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Great to see you. So this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and uh, thesseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.